in the show we have Ave Arc, Samsung News, GameStop going all in in crypto, and much more. I'm your host Mauricio Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. Aave is one of the DeFi liquidity protocol that we have been following here on the podcast. And this week they announced the launch, the final launch in production of a partnership with Fireblocks, where they are performing um, regulated activities such as Know Your Customer, the KYC, and AML compliance, anti-money laundry. And ARC announced this with a hefty list of whitelisted participants on the uh, permission version uh, with 30 financial institutions now able to participate in the liquidity protocol. Among the names are Anubi Capital, Blue Fire Capital, Canvas Digital, Celsius, CoinShares, GSR, Hidden Road, Ribbit Capital, Covario, QCP Capital, and Wintermute. All of them are now able to provide liquidity, liquidity and borrow from the um, DeFi protocol that now runs under the name of ARC. ARC allows these institutions to interact with the exact same protocol in the same way any other users would, but in their own separate and permissioned liquidity pool where each and every user has been verified according to Stanley Kulichov, who's the founder and CEO of Aave. Since launching in June of last year, Fireblocks, uh, which is focused on the institutional digital asset custody space, has over 500 liquidity partners who actively move assets across 30 of the world's largest dig digital asset exchange such as Binance, Bitfinex, Coinbase, FTX and others and reported a year-end 40 billion dollars AUM assets under management as part of their portfolio. Aave on the other hand is a DeFi protocol that is owned and governed by the Aave token holders which now add to over um, 100,000 and the role of these holders is that they can create and vote on proposals to change or update a protocol including deciding whether they're going to go institutional, which of the um, other asset managers are going to be part of their institutional version, which features they want to see uh, included in the protocol. Uh, the rates that the protocol need to, the fees and the rates that the, the, the protocol needs to perform. And it's a, a, a governance system that allow uh, Aave to, to, to govern also Aave Arc. The difference is that the uh, guardian role uh, prevents the whitelist from adding whoever the community wants. They have to go through um, a veto proposal. Uh, if it's necessary for uh, regulatory and compliance obligations. This is also according to uh, Kulichov. The 30 companies that volunteered for this whitelist, some were already on the Fireblocks uh, customer list, and some of them were new that had to be onboarded um, and went through the whole Fireblocks uh, due diligence about that, right? In the DeFi space, there's around uh, 254 billion TVL. TVL is the acronym for total value locked, meaning that this is the dollar equivalent of the tokens that are held by the totality of the DeFi protocols of many types. And this is according to uh, DeFi Llama, which is a big data aggregator for the DeFi space. And Aave is one of the largest uh, lenders, borrow lending platforms uh, within the DeFi ecosystem with around 14.5 billion TVL, 
which means that there's a lot of money to be made providing liquidity and a lot of business to be made by borrowing from these uh, protocols at a much competitive, um, much better competitive rates and performing your day-to-day -day, um, act liquidity activities on your business. So this is why we see a huge opportunity for these types of protocols to enter the institutional market you know, barring that they do all the uh, KYC, ML due diligence in the space. So institutions uh, take heed of this. This is how finance uh, is what finance looks like in the 2022. Korean multinational multi-industry giant Samsung finished the year of 21 and entered 22 with a lot of news this is a lot to digest uh, my friends they announced that their new line of tvs will support nfts which means that you will be able to access the nfts that are sitting on your wallet and visualize them in all their glory in your new samsung tv it's going to integrate the art files that are attached to the nfts on your wallet and showcase them on your bedroom or living room or whatever you connect your wallet so you can brag about your hefty list of nfts all in one place they're not new to the nft space having invested in startups such as uh, sky mavis the creator of x infinity the play to earn game dapper labs forte nifties the sandbox and superware so nothing new uh, for samsung in the space but very interesting that they're now making a dent in your living room with the nfts they're also serious about their carbon footprint and they are working with the interwork alliance which includes accenture and ibm to restore and track carbon of 200 hectares of land they're aiming to sequester over 1 billion pounds of co2 in the space of 25 years the use of blockchain in the space is to uh, facilitate the tracing of the project development and then ensure that all the procedures and measurements of the overall impact are accurate and transparent so you can be audited uh, when we can be audited when you do that um, the process and sit it sit the data on the blockchain uh, for investors to see and the third piece of news is that they are yes launching a store in the metaverse they announced that they are launching the flagship store 837 in decentraland this physical store is in the real world is located in uh, at the 837 Washington Street uh, in uh, New York City's Meat Packing District in Manhattan and the virtual store which is Samsung 837X will be open for a limited time in the central land. This is nothing new for the brands we uh, old folks uh, had the chance to see this happening back when we had the second life application but the quality of these uh, new day metaverses and the fact that they are sitting on top of blockchains uh, changes a lot of what is uh, happening in the brand space so um, according to Michelle Croissant Matos who's the senior vice president of corporate marketing and communications at Samsung Electronics America the metaverse empowers us to transcend physical and spatial limits to create unique virtual experiences that could not happen otherwise. Innovation is in our DNA and we can't wait for you all to experience this burgeoning virtual world. So see, this is happening in the metaverse so fast that we can't keep track of everything that's happening and now Samsung has a, uh, a store in the center. And so this is... Uh, Samsung going all in uh, in the space using both for enterprise uh, art and now marketing so this is what branding looks like this year old gamers favorite GameStop who made the news last year 
in a rally that broke many a hedge fund in the stock uh, exchange announced that they're launching a division that is focused in developing a marketplace for non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrency partnerships, according to people familiar with the matter. They have already hired over 20 people to run the unit and are um, inking a number of partnerships with other technology companies to bring this vision to life. This is part of their uh, turnaround strategy where they are trying not to miss the bus of innovation as they did 10 years ago when uh, computer download games uh, were all the rage and they took a long time to join and then missed completely that timing in the market. This means that for the open seas of the world who are raising a number of you know, huge numbers in capital and other platforms that are in a quote unquote here native to Web3, having GameStop to reposition itself as one of their competitors means bringing a loved brand to the space as well. That's how the, the, the GameStop rally happened last year. It's all about the, this uh, passion vector. And bringing the name into Web3 um, can certainly pull um, a, a good chunk of the dollars that are now being circulated on the NFT space through its own platform, through its own portal, because of the, the passion uh, vector. And because GameStop was so... Uh, instrumental in the video game space in like late 90s early 2000s in the US that means that they can also help bridge the gaming community into the play to earn uh, space which has been received with mixed emotions by the gaming community some love it some hate it definitely but GameStop being this old name with a lot of passion associated to the to the brand we'll certainly see this project not only operating in the pure PFP art, foot photography, NFT space, but certainly related to the gaming community as well. So let's see how this uh, evolves throughout the year. But my perception is that not only they're not going to miss the bus this time, but they're driving uh, at least the video game play to earn space bus as uh, they move along with with the project and because the week was packed full of news here's more jamaica announced that they're done with their cbdc pilot peru announced a set of laws to regulate cryptocurrencies new york state's department of financial services appointed as chief of virtual currencies the executive peter martin former promontory consulting OpenSea reached a 13.3 billion valuation after raising 300 million dollars sandbox is working with hong kong in a partnership to create a mega city in the metaverse ei ventures announced a purchase of a big plot of land in sandbox for psychedelic trips Australian Open, the tennis tournament, announced a series of NFTs on the metaverse to go with the, this year's live matches. NASDAQ listed BTCS announced that they will pay dividends in Bitcoin, a pivot. Banco Santander announced that they will continue to be globally competitive going all, all, all in in crypto. Arab Bank in Switzerland is silently offering DeFi to clients. PayPal announced that they're going to explore their own breed of stablecoin. JP Morgan launched a report in which they tout the year of the bridge in the blockchain space. And messaging app Signal rolled out their global payments using mobile coin. Block Drops Podcast is available on Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Numis, and iColab. 
You can reach out to us through Instagram at Block Drops Podcast, on Twitter at Block Drops Pod, and via email blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. Yay! Shout outs today to the people who provided the links you will find in today's episode notes. Carlos Arena, Crispin Courtney, Joan Hamilton, Alexandre Fazarelli, Anthony Pompliano, Peter Bergstrom, Adi Tripati, Jason Janowitz, Andrea Frosinini, and Kathy Hackel. Don't forget to leave your rating on your favorite player. This is all for today. See you next time. Ciao.